Hey everyone, I thought I'd share my ankle surgery journey. I was a soccer player growing up and I broke my ankle and I also sprained it a million times after that. And now as an adult, I was having issues with instability, so much so that it just be aching and, and painful when just like walking. And uh, I would kind of sprain my ankle for no reason. Uh, and the straw that broke the camel's back, so to speak, is that this uh, past summer, I sprained my ankle walking in my house. And I sprained my ankle attempting to pull a weed. So after convincing, I guess, the orthopedic surgeon that I was not able to do everyday tasks, the decision was made that I qualified for ankle stabilization surgery. I had an MRI done and basically my two lateral or most outside ligaments, my CTFL and ATFL were torn. And so my ankle surgery journey began. So there are two main types of ankle surgery that are used nowadays to, I guess, at least currently as of 2021. And one is called the Bostrom Gold Technique, where essentially they sew together your torn ligaments and sew everything up. And another surgery is called internal brace surgery, where they add screws and some artificial ligaments that they screw into your ankle. And if you're a high performing athlete, like if you were LeBron James, they would definitely probably perform the internal brace surgery. And if you don't do those things, then it may not be the best option. Long story short is both of them have, I think, similar outcomes, but the internal brace surgery, you're back on your feet a bit sooner. But of course, the drawback is you're getting literally things screwed into your bone and there's potentially more that could go wrong and then the word on the street is that perhaps you'll have a stiffer ankle after an internal brace surgery after talking to my surgeon because i'm a bit double jointed like I, i'm just like very flexible or like i can bend my hand backwards the decision was made to go ahead and perform the internal brace surgery just to prevent me needing an additional surgery down the road, what can happen with the uh, Bostrom Gold procedure is if your ligaments are very stretchy, then it can stretch out again and you kind of be back in the same place. And so here I am on surgery day. I had this done in 2021 during COVID time. So um, my partner dropped me off and then couldn't go in with me and I was wearing a mask. I went in for the procedure around 10 in the morning and I think I got home maybe or was able to be picked up maybe around 2 30 or 3 so it's about a half day of surgery uh they do put you under under general anesthesia and then you wake up um so yeah i'm having it done on my right ankle here in this photo so i was put in a splint that kind of had a hard shell but was soft on the outside and was sent home. Luckily, I had prepared in advance and had thought to buy a scooter. My insurance didn't provide a scooter for me, and without it, I think it'd be really hard to get around. The problem with the scooter is it's hard to turn around in tight spaces, so for our bathroom, it was pretty tough. Um, they honestly just handed me crutches when I was all spaced out from being under anesthesia on the way out of the hospital, and thank goodness that, again, I had thought ahead to collect things that I needed. One, a shower chair, two, the scooter. Um, and I also bought on Amazon a shower protector that I could put over my cast, or I guess this is a um, splint, in order to not get my, my leg wet because I couldn't sh get that cast area wet for two weeks. Um, honestly, I'm thankful I have a partner to help me get in and out of the shower because you're, this is non-weight bearing. I can't put any weight on that right ankle and right leg at all. So it's a lot of hopping around to get in and out of uh, showers and, and getting around. And my first day, honestly, I felt like, oh, wow, I feel great. Um, only to realize too late that I think I felt so good because I still had remnants of 
um, anesthesia that was blocking the pain. Um, and I learned the hard way that I should have been taking my codeine, um, my Norco prescription more regularly. I like was like, oh yeah, I have really high pain tolerance. I don't feel anything. And then it woke me from my sleep the next day and it was incredibly painful. I kept trying to take medication. It was not getting any better. And I literally started tearing because I was in so much pain and I couldn't sleep. So I learned the hard way that I needed to be regular about my pain management. And honestly, I had to take both Norco and high dose ibuprofen interchangeably for a good week to maybe nine days until finally the pain subsided enough where I weaned myself off of the codeine because I am just not one to try to use Norco or hydrocodone products for a prolonged period. Plus, it makes me really constipated. It also makes me super sleepy. So I don't love being on those medications. And so it took me about nine days to finally uh, feel good enough to wean myself off those meds um, and then start taking high-dose ibuprofen primarily only. It took me a good week uh, to recover enough to start feeling good enough to move around. But literally for a good week to maybe a week and a half, I spent time really on bed rest and not doing much other than getting up to use the restroom. Um, so plan accordingly. I will say that um, my mobility was poor, my pain was high. And so uh, luckily, I had my little therapy dog here to hang out with me and, again, my partner to help me make meals and uh, make sure I was fed and got to the bathroom without falling over. So, yeah, plan if you're getting this surgery for at the minimum a week and a half of bed rest. And I honestly am a person that likes to push and, you know, don't want to miss work. And I pushed to get back to work in a week and a half, but really it, if I did it better and I had more time taking two weeks off would be more ideal. But I think at least for me, I was able to push for what, a week and a half, but I personally was really surprised how long it took. Um, I was hoping to be on my feet a lot quicker. Um, I had, a, like I mentioned, a, a tough time getting around partially or mostly, I guess, because the ankles non-weight bearing and so my partner went and rented me a wheelchair from a local um uh i guess medical shop and they rented me a wheelchair for forty dollars a week and i had to extend the rental for another week so two weeks and then finally i was like oh my goodness i don't think i'm going to be in any shape to do long-term walking like uh, to walk the dogs around the neighborhood etc for several weeks so I ended up buying a chair on Craigslist for like $80. And wheelchairs are quite expensive and you can find them hopefully on secondhand shops for cheaper if you think that you need it long term. Like as of now, I'm feeling like I need it for several weeks um, and I maybe should have just purchased one to begin with. For the first two weeks, plan on elevating your ankle and leg whenever at all possible um, because it throbs and it hurts uh, when it's not. So a lot of pillows or you can buy a specialty pillow for, or for legs being raised and I would plan your entertainment and or workstation life accordingly. Also icing your injury or surgery ankle will be helpful to reduce the swelling, but obviously hard if you're in a splint or a cast. So the pro tip I learned, not from my surgeon's office, but from a friend, was to put the ice pack behind your knee um, because that way the blood that will, uh, you know, that goes there will circulate to your ankle and back. After two weeks, I went to the doctor's office to get my splint removed and perform a post-op uh, with my particular insurance. They scheduled me with a PA rather than the primary surgeon. Essentially, all that happened is they cut off my uh, splint and took a look at the incision to make sure it was healing properly. And obviously, you can see my foot here is pretty swollen. And uh, yeah, it's poofy, but apparently it is healing well. 
Um, uh, the PA helped to remove the stitches. It wasn't the most painless process, but it wasn't painful. Um, there was a little bit of bleeding that went on when he removed these stitches and he had to kind of dig in there. Um, so yeah, it was mainly that and then being switched into a cam boot or a moon boot, which I was really excited about because I was allowed to have 50% weight bearing after this i thought my life would be easy street after i got put into this cam boot after two weeks but unfortunately for me i found at least initially um it wasn't the easiest thing in the world uh, luckily a friend of mine recommended i get a walker because it again it's been really hard to use crutches uh, just for stability and you might fall on the crutches. So I highly recommend the walker as well. You can get one on Amazon for like under 50 bucks or so. And yeah, I highly recommend the walker over crutches, um, especially for this phase where you're allowed to put some weight on uh, your ankle. You may ask, why not just keep using the knee scooter? Uh, the problem I had is that cam boot, that black moon boot, is so heavy on the bottom. Um, in the position a knee scooter is with the ankle, it honestly felt like it was pulling on my ankle and my ankle was being pulled apart. It was very, is, not was, is painful. And I found that using a walker, even though it's slow as molasses, and I think a snail could beat me as far as my speed on how I'm getting places, the knee scooter was really uncomfortable because of, again, how heavy the boot was. I emailed my surgeon and he said that I was allowed to use a lace-up brace uh, and take the boot off if I needed to use the knee scooter um, to get from A to B faster. So there's that. Um, otherwise, walking with a walker was much more comfortable pain-wise, but again, really slow. One thing I haven't mentioned is that because unfortunately this is my right angle, I haven't been able to drive because both the splint and the moon boot don't facilitate driving. Luckily, my partner has been able to help me get from place to place if I need to, but plan accordingly if it's going to be your right ankle that you're going to be out of commission and or you might need a jerry rig um, in a safe way, hopefully a way to drive. And there are, you know, lots of options you can Google online for things you can buy and kits to convert, um, the gas pedal if you so need to. So that's it so far. Here's my, uh, demo c coming up of what I'm capable of right after I got put in the moon boot. All right. I just got switched from my, um, my splint to a walking cast or a moon boot that apparently I'm allowed to put 50% weight on. So it's been, my uh, surgery was on the 1st, it is the 15th today. So two weeks out, and this is what I got going. Um, it's still a bit painful, I, I couldn't even put more weight on it. I don't even think I'm putting 50% weight. I'm probably putting like 20% weight. Um, by the way, this walker, uh, very necessary, I think, given the limited weight. I don't know how I'd be doing uh, on crutches. I think crutches, I would definitely fall over. So let's. This is this is what going. I think I need to spring for uh, some. I need to spring for some bicycle gloves because my hands are really starting to hurt. But anyway, this is a uh, first full day after being switched to a moon boot. Some more accessories that I wish I knew I needed was that when I'm using my walker, I can't carry anything in my hands. And so I eventually bought this little caddy for like $30 on Amazon to put stuff in, including, you know, a little water bottle holder. So it's not a must, but I think it is definitely nice. And if you're by yourself, for sure, you need some way of carrying stuff because your hands are occupied with, you know, trying to not fall over using the walker. The other upgrade that I got was that I had my husband put tennis balls on the back. And you see people using walker and tennis balls. I get it now um, because otherwise it drags and you kind of wear out the rubber in the back and the tennis balls make it like really smooth or smoother at least to get around. Um, the other thing I wish that I knew in advance, but kind of too late now, is 
that I wish the handles were cushier on the top. So, and you know, if you can't afford it, maybe get a nicer walker. And or I know I mentioned in my video that you could possibly get like bicycle gloves. Maybe that would help uh, ease the pain because, yeah, your hands, the palm of your hands start to hurt after walking around with this thing for long enough because you have to put weight in your hands, in your arms, to try to keep yourself from putting too much weight on your ankle when you're walking. So um, in case you're shopping, I will just want to review the shopping list. Um, so here are the must needs. The must needs are a protector for your cast for the shower, if you would like to shower, a shower chair or waterproof chair, even a lawn chair I think will do as long as it fits in your shower for sitting down to shower for those first couple of weeks. Um, I highly recommend the walker and if you need to get around faster and there's someone to push you, a wheelchair, or if there's no one to push you, maybe a motorized scooter um, to help as well. And then for the walker, as I mentioned, some accessories like a little baggie to hold your stuff would be helpful. And oh, I forgot. Yes, knee scooter I thought was really clutch for the first two weeks. But right now, unfortunately, not the most useful because of my transition to the moon boot. I'm wondering once my ankle heals up, maybe the weight of the moon boot won't feel so horrible using the knee scooter. But I guess I'll update you later um, if that happens. But for now, um, the knee scooter is pretty painful with the cam boot, that moon boot. And the only way I can kind of pull it off is if I switch to a lace up ankle brace, which is not as uh, protective if you should run into anything, so to speak. It's not good. So yeah, I think those are the things to keep in mind for purchasing in advance of the surgery, ideally. And thanks for watching and listening. And hopefully this was helpful for you. And like I mentioned, I will post an update uh, once I continue down this journey.